Do you have knee cartilage loss that keeps you from going up or down stairs, keeps you from walking as much as you like, or otherwise exercising or being as active as you'd like? If so, this video is for you. I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you what causes knee cartilage loss, why cartilage loss or cartilage injury can be kind of confusing in the knee, and some things that you can do to help yourself relieve your knee pain and become more active without needing surgery. Now, if you find this video helpful, give it a like or thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Now, first of all, what is knee cartilage? And that can be kind of confusing because there are actually two different types of cartilage in your knee. There are three types of cartilage in your body. The, the elastic cartilage that your nose and your ears are made out of, and then a fibro cartilage, which is tougher, and then your joint cartilage, which is called hyaline cartilage or articular cartilage. If you've ever had you know, physical therapy or any other type of rehab, you may have heard the term motion is lotion. And your hyaline cartilage or the cartilage that lines your joint surfaces, it is smooth on the ends. It makes for the joints rolling and gliding smoothly. And it releases a lubricating type of fluid that makes the joints move smoothly. Now, when you have cartilage loss, you lose some of that lubricating fluid and if you've been sitting for a long time, like when you first wake up in the morning or if you've been sitting in a chair or going on a long trip, you may notice that your knee becomes a little bit more stiff. And that's because that articular cartilage loss, it prevents that fluid, you don't get that as much of that lubricating fluid going out into your knee. Now, the other type of cartilage in your knee is the fibrocartilage. And that makes up the meniscus that kind of sits around the top of the knee joint. You have your thigh bone or femur, and then your lower leg bone, tibia, and the menisci kind of sit on either side of the tibia, and they help protect the articular cartilage. It also gives your joint a little bit more stability so that if you're twisting or changing directions, that your leg, you know, it stays in where it's supposed to be. It gives the joint a little more stability and makes it a little more prone to pivoting or twisting movements. However, you don't want to pivot or twist too much because those menisci sit in between the joint and when you twist too much you kind of grind those fibrocartilage discs or menisci down and you can create a cartilage injury to the meniscus. Now that's not the same as a cartilage injury to the cartilage on the joint. That actually can present as a deep bone bruise like if you fall from a height and you jam the joints together. But most of the time when you're talking about cartilage loss in the knee you're talking about arthritis where the our cartilage between the upper leg bone and the lower leg bone, it kind of starts to thin or go away. And when you have that thinning of your cartilage, that in itself, that arthritis isn't actually painful, but the inflammation that it creates can become painful. When you lose that lubricating surface, that smooth gliding surface, you start rubbing the bone on the bone and it can create some inflammation and irritation within the joint. And that inflammation is actually what causes the pain and the arthritis. Now, you may have heard of some supplements to help with knee arthritis pain, and those knee arthritis supplements like hyaluronic acid, glucosamine, chondroitin, they're all substances that make up that uh, articular cartilage. And there are even injections that you can get put into the knee, synthetic cartilage or rooster, rooster comb cartilages, but if you're not really up for that or you just don't like long needles, um, there are some other things you can do. There are some supplements like glucosamine or chondroitin, many brands out there on the market, but you know, essentially they give you the building blocks, the things that you need to remake the ground substance that makes up the articular cartilage. The other thing that can help is you know, something called uh, joint restore gummies. And these are some things that I happened on by accident, but I've had a number of patients with knee arthritis who have actually used them, and uh, they say it helps quite a bit. Looking into the science behind it, it's a uh, frankincense or boswellia, and it's combined with CBD. And most of those help control the inflammation that happens with knee arthritis. Now, as far as things that you can do to help if you have joint cartilage loss in your knee, probably the best thing is walking. The weight-bearing exercise where you're moving the knee and lubricating it by secreting some of that lubricating fluid or synovial fluid, it helps make the joint smoother. Again, that motion is lotion philosophy. And also when you have repeated low impact exercise where you're 
putting some pressure on the joints, but you're not really jamming it together hard like when you run or do some other high impact exercise. That actually stimulates the chondrocytes or the cells that lay down new cartilage. And it's essential to rebuilding cartilage. As far as other exercises that help with cartilage repair, when you do something to strengthen the muscle, you're looking probably in the five, eight, 10, 12, 15 number of reps when you're trying to strengthen muscles, depending on whether you're going for you know, really brute strength or whether you're going for muscle endurance. When you're talking about training to optimize cartilage repair, you're talking thousands of reps. So like walking, other low impact things where you're moving repetitively, not fives, not tens, not hundreds, but thousands of times. And those are the types of exercises that actually help restore cartilage repair. Now, do you need to see a physical therapist or other rehab professional to help with cartilage repair? In theory, no. The best exercise for it is walking and aerobic exercise, very low on the joint. The problem is that if you tend to twist your knee or you've got another dysfunction in your knee or your ankle or your hip or something that's causing you to move awkwardly or cause some of those twisting movements that tend to injure the meniscus or put extra stress on the joints or ligaments, it can become too painful to walk. And that in turn means that you're not only not getting the exercise that you need to get to stimulate the cartilage, but you're also causing extra friction, extra inflammation and things that can cause some extra pain. So things that you can do to avoid that you know, twisting or extra motion, um, just walking with a little arch in your foot or wearing arch support so that you don't twist so much is something helpful that you can do to prevent that excessive twisting motion when you're walking. Now, if you do need some more information for things that you can do to prevent inflammation or prevent your knee from moving in the wrong positions when you're walking, we'd be happy to help. And if you found this video helpful, give it a like, a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks and have a great day.